Hello and welcome. This is Author to Author, and I am your host Jasveer. Today I have Katie Anglehart with me. She is the author of the Vice One, the Scottish Scrolls book series one. Uh, the book is available on Amazon in paperback and uh, uh, ebook format. It's a fantasy book. Today we will talk about her experience as an author, and more importantly, her experience as a fantasy author. Katie Anglehart is her author name. Her real name is Katrina. Katrina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for for having me. Katrina, uh, please tell uh, the listeners something about you, uh, your uh, life as an author, and anything else that you do apart from writing books. My author name is Katie Anglehart, but uh, okay. yeah, you could definitely call okay. me Katrina. I am also a freelance editor. I'm a podcaster myself. I started one recently geared towards fantasy writers. Um, it's called Writing the Broomstick. <laughs> so we have a lot of fun on there. And um, I did a lot of education in journalism and creative writing. I worked in digital marketing. So I was always in the writing world, uh, but stories is really where my passion truly lies. So I published my first book last October during the pandemic. And here we are, I'm writing book two. Okay. Uh, so you prefer writing to doing anything else? I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, when did you start writing? What is the earliest that you remember you, you know, you wrote something? I started writing, I think, in the sixth grade after I read the first Harry Potter book. <laughs> so I believe the first story I wrote was something to do with witches, but I can't say I remember the details. Right. So you've been uh, inclined towards the fantasy genre since the beginning. Always, yes. I've always been drawn to fantasy. Anything to do with magic. I mean, I love the Chronicles of Narnia. I love Lord of the Rings. Um, anything that took me away to another world, I was just, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your inspiration, you know, uh, the the world of fantasy, you know, transporting you from the real world to the fantasy world. Is that your inspiration behind choosing this genre? Yeah, absolutely. Magic was always my inspiration. I mean, it was then, it still is now. Um, I mean, I write urban fantasy, so um, that means like magic that manifests in our world rather than a completely fabricated one, like Lord of the Rings. Um, so the only thing that's changed is that I've become infatuated with Celtic folklore, and that's now become a huge theme in my book. So I do weave a lot of mythology into my stories. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, fantasy is all about creating the world in the reader's mind. So uh, why don't you read some lines for us, uh, your favorite lines? <laughs> uh, this might come across as funny because it's dialogue, so... Um, it's obviously in my voice, but um, yeah, I'll give this a shot. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is an early exchange between the protagonist, McKenna, and her newfound friend, Nissa. McKenna breathed out in relief. You know, if you want to be liked at school, you shouldn't be seen with me. Hmm, I always felt like being liked was as important as scotch tape. McKenna didn't have a clue what that was supposed to mean, but she decided it was catchy. You're a little odd, Nissa. Yeah, so are you. They stood in silence for a moment. McKenna suddenly snickered at a distant memory. You know, when I was a kid, my dad would always say, if it's drowning you're after, don't torment yourself with shallow water. Nissa snorted at McKenna's imitation of an Irish accent. What does that mean? I was never entirely sure, to be honest, but now I think it means to leave your comfort zone, to dive right into what you're most afraid of, because living a shallow life is worse than drowning. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I can see why you only write uh, fantasy. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, in terms of fantasy uh, or in terms of just generic writing, what is the most difficult part of uh, your writing process? Oof, honestly, the middle. Um, I can usually dive right into the beginning with 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 ease. But um, and I love crafting endings. I never had trouble with that. But the middle is pretty laborious. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you do you mean you know you've cre created the plot you know you have the beginning you have the end but then it's the filling the middle part that's that's difficult for you yeah I've always been worried about sort of dragging the reader on <laughs> like I want so yeah uh, it's it's it kind of worries me I'm a <laughs> I'm always afraid of dragging the reader along and keeping them interested 
Um, so yeah, the middle, the middle is the scary part. Okay. And then what usually comes to you first, the plot or the characters? I think the story idea usually comes first, but the characters appear almost immediately afterwards. You can't have one without the other anyway, so they sort of appear simultaneously. Okay. And, uh, you know, you you are a published author. You know, you, you've helped others also. You've done editing, a lot of editing for other authors as well. So what's your favorite part of uh, uh, publishing? And what is the least favorite part? My favorite part is seeing your cover for the first time. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. There's nothing like it. And I think my least favorite would be getting ARC reviews, like advanced reader copy reviews. Um, I don't have nerves of steel yet. So some of them get to me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let me ask you, which is the meanest feedback or the comment or the reader review that you've received? I don't read all my reviews um, and I was told not to from the beginning. It's just, I, I sort of did anyways. <laughs> but <laughs> one of it. the one of the things I read was that um, it was, I think, what did he say? Something like, this is just mediocre. And that's, I think, the most, <laughs> the thing that got to me the most because it's like, you didn't hate it for a good reason or like it. You just thought it was like, whatever. <laughs> So I think that's the worst feedback I can think of right now anyway. Okay. And which is the best compliment that you've received about your book? Oh my gosh. I've gotten, I've I've honestly been lucky. I've gotten people who just understood my message and understood where I was coming from so, so clearly. I've had people say that they were completely transported to Ireland I've had people say that the magic felt really real. The friendship felt completely genuine. Um, yeah. yeah. And that they would recommend it to uh, high school students. Cause I, I did want to write for teenagers. Um, of course, young adults love reading teen books too. So that's a huge uh, part of my audience as well. But yeah, I had someone say, I wish I had this when I was teaching high school uh, to hand out to my students. And I really love that. Wow, I mean, you know that's that's indeed a wonderful compliment or or a reader review. Uh, yeah. That that when they say that they will recommend it to others as well. You know that's how you sell for self publishing authors. Uh, word of mouth mouth is something that is the easiest form of marketing. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> right, guys. So grab your copy of the Wise One on Amazon uh, and Amazon Kindle, whichever you prefer, ebook or paperback. Okay, so uh, how did you come up with the title of your book? Um, It was sort of a given when I knew what my protagonist's journey was going to be. Uh, She discovers she's a wise one, and that's a term we don't understand right off the bat. Uh, Its true meaning is the very core of the series. It really just came to me. So uh, I had come across this term when I was reading um, a New Age spiritual books. I I do read a lot of those and they do inspire me in my fantasy writing. So uh, when I came across what a wise one was, I just loved it. And I think the book idea sort of sprung into action. I just knew it was going to be called the wise one. And I don't want to say more than that because it'll kind of give away a huge punchline. (laughs) Right. And and you you've talked a lot about Ireland uh, in in the book. So what's the idea behind that? Uh, it was it was probably my biggest source of inspiration, um, the landscape and the folklore of Ireland. So I was there for my honeymoon, actually. I went to Ireland and I went to Scotland and uh, just being there and absorbing the, the beauty of the locations. And and I do depict them in the book. Uh, so that's just it just what drove so much of the story. Right. And uh, what part of the book did you have the hardest time writing? You know? There was there were scenes where they separate the girls so the protagonist and her new friend Nissa because they're at first they're together on this journey and they do end up separating at a certain point and I actually did find it difficult uh it's like they were actually torn apart in real life for me so it was it was a little bit difficult writing the scene separately it's like it's like they were halves of a of a whole <laughs> so yeah right. so uh how important to you, uh, to you is the writing space? You know, is there something specific that you need in your writing space to stay focused? You know, I probably put 
too much emphasis on my writing space, too much importance on my writing space, because, yeah, it really it really does affect me. I, I'm I'm really used to writing at cafes. I wrote most of my first book at um, a bunch of cafes near my old place in Montreal. That's where I used to live. Um, but that hasn't been possible now, obviously, with with um, the pandemic. So writing book two at home and I'll just sort of play some ambient cafe sounds or some Celtic music, depending on the scene that I'm writing, maybe light a candle. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just like your stories, you like something uh, related to the fantasy world in, <laughs> even in your writing space. <laughs> it definitely That's helps good. set the mood. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it would help you to connect with fantasy indeed. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, the fun part and I love asking this question. Now, <laughs> not many authors support it, but if your books were made into a movie, right, which actors would you want to play the characters? Hypothetical well, situation. Well, I have totally thought about this because <laughs> I want these to be movies uh, or to, uh, like a mini series or something like that. Like I'm, I'm very into adaptations. So um, I would likely look for for fresh faces to portray McKenna, Nissan, and Kelly, and I like the idea of having like fresh new actors. But I can't help but see um, Adam Fergus. I don't know if anyone remembers being Erica. It's a Canadian uh, dramedy, um, mm -hmm. so he and he's an Irish actor, and I really see him as Sean. And, which is McKenna's father. And I see Caramo Brown from Queer Eye as Andre, his partner, mm -hmm. because they're both so dashing. And I just saw them almost immediately in my mind. Um, and maybe it's a long shot, but I've always pictured Nicole Kidman as the high priestess. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, dream big. <laughs> oh, dream big, indeed. And she's going to make a formidable, uh, you know, high priestess, I'm sure. Uh, that... It would be perfect. She would be perfect. Well, good. So remember, hypothetical situation. So fingers crossed. This is your word. <laughs> you choose your actors. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Katrina, what is the future of your characters? I mean, will there be a sequel? Yes, I am writing the sequel. Um, I'm get, I don't want to sound like super vague about the future of my characters, but I kind of have to. Um, all I'm going to say is that they will be divinely guided. They will meet the obstacles they're meant to meet and learn the lessons they're meant to learn on their soul journeys. Because this book really is about like spiritual paths and um, they're each going to go through their own unique soul journeys. Wow, I know that does sound vague, but that's what I'm going to say for now. Okay, look forward to your... Uh, fantasy work in the future. <laughs> right. So what do you like to do when you're not writing? Well, I won't say reading because that's a given, I think, for any writer. Um, so taking a dog, taking a dog, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> taking my dog Nessie for, for hikes um, with, my, with my husband. Um, she's a small little mutt that we rescued from uh, Puerto Rico last year yeah right before the pandemic we actually got we were really lucky with that we the timing was great for us um i like painting i'm an amateur but it's really fun um i like playing video games and binging tv shows so yeah <laughs> something we've all learned to do during the lockdown because of exactly COVID, you know? i know it's so TV unoriginal shows. yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and so which uh, writers have inspired you? Who do you read when you're not writing? Well, as a storyteller, I mean, I have to mention J.K. Rowling. She was my first inspiration. Um, as a writer for teens and young adults, I, I loved Liba Bray, Colleen Hook, Cornelia Funk and Deborah Harkness. They've been huge, huge, huge influences. And especially Deborah Harkness still today. She's continuing her All Souls um series and sh she's actually adapted her books into a television show which is completely amazing it's excellent and i continue to worship this author and screenwriter today <laughs> so um yeah and i'd say each of them have influenced my writing style in some way definitely right are you interested in screenwriting Oh, yes, definitely. I've always been interested in TV writing. I've studied script writing. I've, I've uh, wow. written TV shows and pitch Bibles on my own, uh, as in like uh, personal projects that I do hope to sell one day. So it's always something ongoing that I'm doing on the side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All the best for that as well. Thank you. Right. 
So how often do you write? Uh, you know, are you a very disciplined writer who sets targets and <laughs> every day? I try to write every day. Um, I haven't been too successful because, as I said, my I have difficulty writing inside all day long. So I write every other day. Um, but I mean, my first book, it was like it was much smoother. I think I, I felt like I was in the twilight zone at some point. Like while I was writing it, um, I was also doing my MFA in creative writing and working full time as a content manager. So I used to write on my breaks at work and on weekends and my on my days off. And somehow I managed. Um, but like I said, so now I have a, now I'm a freelance editor. I have a flexible schedule and I am home. So I can, I have the luxury of writing every day, but yeah, it can, it can be difficult in this current climate. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. I agree. Mm. All right. So what is your message for the young and aspiring authors who are willing to explore the new dimensions of creative writing? You know, I love that you use the words new dimensions because I feel that's exactly what writing is. Um, and I say there's no right time to start writing. You're not too young. You're not too old. You're not too busy or too inexperienced. You're ready as soon as that idea hits. So just get writing and worry about making it all make sense and sounding great on the subsequent drafts. Just get the story down. You're yearning to tell it for a reason. Yep. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> All right. uh, so uh, I just wanted to talk to you about, you know, you've recently moved to Toronto and this is kind of a extemporary question for you. Tell our, uh, you know, listeners something about Toronto. What do you like in Toronto, you know, uh, or do you still prefer Montreal? Oh my gosh. Well, uh, I love Toronto. Well, Montreal is my home for sure. And it's a very different vibe. It's much more, um, has like a European feel. And um, I guess when you're here, you feel like you're more in Canada. <laughs> I don't know. It's very like patriotic. It's, uh, it's very vibrant. There's lots to do. And uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I'm happy. I'm happy we moved here. <laughs> wow, truly. Uh, I love Toronto. Uh, I've been here for six yeah. months and I, I totally love it here. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hopefully, you know, uh, look forward to see a beautiful summer here. Yes. Oh, you haven't experienced summer. Summer is great. Oh. Like they, they close off streets. There's there's like stuff going on, except, you know, we don't know how that's going to go this yeah. summer. But fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully COVID ends soon. <laughs> yeah. All right, Katrina, thank you so much for taking time out to speak with me. It was a lovely conversation. I'm so sure the listeners have also enjoyed it. And uh, guys, uh, Katrina is the author of The Wise One. Grab your copies now on uh, Amazon in ebook and paperback format. Katrina, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you for having me. And I just want to say, look out for KT Engelhart because that's the name on the uh, on the book itself because you won't find oh, one yes. by Katrina. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can find uh, The Wise One uh, with KT Engelhart and uh, that's available on Amazon in ebook and paperback format. Right, guys, thank you so much for taking time out to listen to us. Uh, I will be back with another episode very soon. Till that time, take care and stay safe. Thank you.